Okay, everybody, today I hope you're ready to learn some new logic, but more importantly, I hope you're ready to hear a lot about superheroes because that's what all of our examples are going to involve. Because it's fun for me. And if it's fun for me, I'll be more enthusiastic and we'll have a more enjoyable time. So, what are we doing today? Today, we are going to deal with the identity, uh, the identity relation. And for that, what we're going to do is use an equal sign. And so what we're going to do is start with these simple statements, right? If I wanted to say Tony Stark is Iron Man, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use lowercase letters for Tony Stark and Iron Man. And I will simply say T is equal to I. That The identity relation is the equal sign. And I'm just saying Tony Stark and Iron Man, they're the same person. So I'm saying T equals I. Likewise, if I want to say Barry Allen is the Flash, B is equal to T. Barry Allen is equal to the Flash. They're the same person. Now, with a new relation, we want to think about the negation of that relation. What if I said Hal Jordan is not Wonder Woman? Well, what you could do, I mean, you could just negate Hal Jordan is Wonder Woman. But that's not what we're going to do. What you'll see us do is we'll say Hal Jordan is not equal to Wonder Woman. That'll be our shorthand. Instead of doing Hal Jordan equals Wonder Woman and negating it, we'll just put a slash through the equal sign. So Hal Jordan is not Wonder Woman. Likewise, Clark Kent is not Sinestro. Clark Kent is not equal to S. C does not equal S. Now, before we move forward in this video, what I want to say is, our translations, uh, not mine specifically, but more that you'll see, will include long strings of conjunctions or disjunctions. And, you know, normally we have to have um, an order to that. We have to involve a lot of parentheses if we're going to have a lot of conjunctions back to back to back. To save us time, uh, we're just going to understand that and drop all the parentheses. So if I had a ton of if I had a string of like four conjunctions, let's just say A, B, C, and D, I would just write A and B and C and D. We're not going to worry about the order with parentheses. Likewise, it's understood with the identity relation that the relation is between the two things immediately to the left and right of the relation. So you're going to see me dealing with conditionals, right? Um, let's just say um, if P, then E equals I, I'm not going to bother writing parentheses around this. It's understood that E and I are joined by the identity relation and P implies E equals I. So I just wanted to say that before I started writing things and somebody caught it and was wondering, is that right? So now let's move on to some less simple, more complex statements. The first of that kind will be only, the only, and no blah 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 except. So if I have a statement like these, they're all going to be translated pretty much the same, which is why I'm putting them together. So if I want to say only Thor can pick up Mjolnir, how would I translate that? Well, what I'm thinking is first what I have to do is say Thor can pick up Mjolnir. And to do that, I'll just say, I'll write it like this. I'll say uh, PT. This means Thor picks up Mjolnir, right? I could have done a relational predicate. I'm not going to. So we're saying Thor picks up Mjolnir. That's all good. But now what I have to do is think about the rest of the universe, right? Because I need to restrict picking up Mjolnir only to Thor. So how do I do that? So I say Thor can pick it up. And for all X, for all X, if X can pick up Mjolnir, then what we can conclude is that x is equal to t, x is equal to Thor. So this is our entire statement first looks at Thor and says, yes, he can do this action. And then we look at the rest of the universe and we say, if it's the case that something in the universe can pick up the hammer, then we can conclude that x is equal to t. Why? Because only Thor can pick up the hammer. Mjolnir is his hammer, for those of you who don't know. So that's how we're going to translate these statements, right? So likewise, the only speedster in Central City is the Flash. So first, what I need to do is say uh, the Flash is a speedster and the Flash is in Central City. And then I need to say if anything else is a speedster and in Central C City, then they are the Flash. So 
start by saying the flash is speedster. So we'll say um, st. So the flash is speedster, and the flash is in Central City. So we'll say um, we'll just write i for in Central City. Flash is in Central City. And for all x, if x is a speedster and x is in Central City, then x is equal to the flash. It must be the case that x is the flash because the only speedster in Central City is the flash. Now I want to say no detective except Batman is a superhero. So this is our no blah 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 except example. No detective except Batman is a superhero. So what I want to say first is clarify that Batman is a detective. So Batman is a detective and Batman is a superhero. And then I want to look at everything else in the universe and say that if something X is a detective and it's a superhero, then it must be the case that X is Batman because no detective except Batman is a superhero. Oh, hold on, wait. Yeah, so that, that's how we would translate that. Now we're going to move on to uh, a different type of translation. Only the only no blah 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 except they were all exactly the same. Now what we're going to look at is all except. So if I said all Justice League members except Aquaman are cool, how do I translate this? Well, what I have to do, right, is first look at our subject who is being contrasted, right? So we have Aquaman. Aquaman is a Justice League member, and he is not cool, is what I'm saying. Then what I want to say is, for all X, I want to look at everything else in the universe, right? And I want to say, if something else is a Justice League member, and that thing is not Aquaman, then it is cool. So in symbols, right, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk about Aquaman first. I'll say, Aquaman is a Justice League member. So I'll say, J, A. And then I'm going to say uh, Aquaman is not cool. So I'll negate cool Aquaman. And then finally, we're going to look at everything else in the universe and say for all X. If X is a Justice League member and X does not equal Aquaman, so if they're a Justice League member and they're not Aquaman, then they are cool. So that's how we do the all except translations. So if I want to say all speedsters except the reverse flash are heroes, I need to first look at the reverse flash and say, okay, the reverse flash is a speedster. The reverse flash is not a hero. And then for all X, for all X, what do I want to say? If X is a speedster and X does not equal R, oh, sorry, I didn't negate that up there. And X does not equal R, so X is a speedster and it's not the reverse flash, then we can conclude that that speedster is a hero because all speedsters except the reverse flash are heroes. So we have our subject being contrasted, we have the qualities we assign to them, and then we have a universal conditional statement saying if you have this quality and you're not this person, then you could say this about them. That's the kind of general form you'll follow for all except. And now the last thing I want to talk about in this video are superlatives. Now, the way that we handle superlatives is we have kind of a subject in our sentence, uh, a classification and a quality for that subject. So if I say the funniest superhero is Spider-Man, Spider-Man is the subject we're worrying about. His classification, he's a superhero and the adjective is like the funniest or the, qual the quality is that he's the funniest of all superheroes. So what I want to do for my translation is, is say Spider-Man is a hero. And then we look at everything else in the universe and we say if X is a hero and X is not Spider-Man, then Spider-Man is going to be funnier than X because Spider-Man is the funniest superhero. So we'll say Spider-Man is a hero. And for all X, if X is also a hero and X is not Spider-Man, then it must be the case that Spider-Man is funnier than X. You can see our next example is 
pretty identical. We just changed the quality to ruthless. And we are going to say that Deadpool is a hero. And when we look at everything else in the universe, if something is also a hero, but it is not Deadpool, then we could say that Deadpool is more ruthless than whatever that something is, whatever that hero is. So that's going to do it for today. The next thing we'll talk about are numerical statements, and those deal with overlapping quantifiers. And I, I, I figure they're more they're different enough than the stuff that we've done today to put them in their own video. Um, so that's what we're going to do next time. But with that said, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you like the superhero stuff, and I hope you learned something.